It wasn't meant to be. Who told you that? Did someone tell you that? Did some people tell you that? Did you tell yourself that? Who gave you that lie that it wasn't meant to be? We're going to get into that into this video, but first I want to tell you thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Tamra Tamu Collective where dreams have no filter. Get your water, get your tea, get your smoothie, I don't know, get your coffee, get your martini, whatever it is that you like to sip on. Get comfortable because we're diving into this today. Um, this is one of my favorite topics to get into. It wasn't meant to be. I guess it wasn't meant to be. We hear that so many times and many times we hear that when it's centered around age. Okay. So for many people, when we get to a certain age, and I'm really not even sure what that certain age is, but it's almost as if, if our dreams haven't panned out the way that we want, then we settle for the idea of, well, I guess it wasn't meant to be. Okay? And the question that I want to ask is, well, who decides what is meant to be in your life? So we're going to take the long route in answering that question. So let's go back to that fallacy. It wasn't meant to be. We can talk about how, you know, people of certain ages, but that fallacy goes beyond age. The fallacy, it happens, it occurs after we have worked on or pursued a dream, but then we felt that the outcome was less desired or subpar. And there are many reasons for this. And based on my experience, I'm going to give you, again, from my perspective, from my experience, what some of these reasons are, okay? So many times the outcome of that dream pursuit could look less than what we desire because perhaps we pursued it in a traditional way, in a way that followed some step-by-step -step plan. While a step-by-step -step plan could be good for some people, it could be practical for some people, perhaps that step-by-step -step plan was not practical for you. That traditional plan was not aligned with who you are. So after all that forcing and that grinding, trying to fit a square peg into this box, it just didn't work, it didn't fit. Didn't mean, does not mean that your dream isn't valid. Didn't mean, does not mean that your dream is not meant to be. It just means there's another way for you. We pursued in a way that the experts told us it needed to be done. I'll give you an example of this. Long ago, probably it's maybe a decade, almost a decade now, when I first started, just the apparel segment of my business I was told, you know, by business experts, you know, maybe you shouldn't be the face of your own brand. That never made sense to me. While I knew that there were many businesses, 
of all kinds, it didn't matter if it was apparel wear, the owner, where the, you know, creative behind the brand was not out in the front and that brand was successful. But the truth is for me, I wanted, I had no problem being at the forefront of my brand. I had no problem. I had no issue modeling my own clothes. I had no issue with that. But it took me a while to get to that point because I was listening to experts tell me that. Okay, so that's an example. So are the outcome may have been less than desired because instead of us taking action toward this dream, instead of us taking action with the mindset of I'm taking this journey because I know this dream is already complete. We took action with the mindset of, I don't even know if this is going to work anyway. There's a difference. There's a shift in energy. The way that you take action there, think about it. If you're taking action, knowing well, this is just already done. I'm just going through this journey. I'm going through the journey of meeting people. I'm going through the journey of meeting other business-like people. I'm going through the journey because this is fun. I'm having a good time going toward my creation that is already complete versus, you know, I'm taking all this action. I don't even know if this is going to work. The energy that you put into your action is going to be completely different. So what I can say for myself is that I was taking action, not identifying as a business owner, but the whole time I was thinking, I'm doing all this work. I don't even know if it's going to work. So different energy there. So that turns into desperate action which turns into burnout okay so you've got I've just presented just three different reasons four different reasons that could be why our pursuit of our dreams the first time around was less than what we desired could be again from my experience so let's get back into, okay, here we have this fallacy. It wasn't meant to be. Here's the good news around all of that. The good news is when you have a vision that comes from your soul, it doesn't go away. The vision does not go away. The desire does not go away because it wants to be expressed. The good news is that just because you may have whispered that fallacy to yourself, oh, it wasn't meant to be, the good news is that the dream doesn't go away. So you can tell yourself that, other people can tell you that, but then your dream is in the back saying, no, I'm still here. I still want to be expressed through you. The dream remains as you decide to make it a part of your identity. And identity, the notion of identity, we're going to get into that also, but that's going to be in depth in another video. Okay, so that dream is sitting there waiting for you to just take it and say, this is who I am. This is who I am. I don't have to worry about how, but this is who I am. And so from that, you can still be asking the question, okay, well, I have, I still have this dream that I want. I still have this business that I want. 
I still have these stories that I want to write. I still have these songs that I want to write. So how do I know if I should keep going toward that? And I invite you to take on this perspective. You keep embracing it until you don't have to ask that question anymore. As long as you have to keep asking that question, well, how do I know if I should keep going or keep taking action towards that? As long as you keep having to ask, that vision is still, it is still flashing before you and it is still wanting to be expressed in your life. Doesn't even matter how you went about it the first time or the second time or the third time. I don't care how many times. Because see, now what you have, after all those moments, now what you have, you've got even more substance and even more power now to rely on your intuition to rely on your internal power to guide you to inspired action, to grasp hold of that vision, to embrace it. It's not going to come about in a traditional way. So you now you also have the substance and the power to release yourself from that. It does not have to come to you. It's not going to come to you in, a, in the traditional way. Now you've been given the opportunity to have fun, take action in fun toward this vision, toward this dream, okay? It still wants to be expressed through you. So I have notes here, so that's why I'm looking back and forth. So now you ask the question, well, how can I embrace this? How can I take action how can this be this dream be expressed through me that goes beyond how I think, how my logic is telling me it's supposed to look? How can I go beyond what's traditional? How can I use what supposedly didn't work? How can I use that now to go about it differently? How can I identify with this vision right now. What would the artist in me look like now? What would the business owner do from day to day? What would the painter do from day to day? What songs would the, would the songwriter in me write today? That is how you can identify, still identify with that dream, right? So, in what ways can you be that now? These questions have nothing to do, and I, I know I said this before, these questions have nothing to do with the outcome from the past. Nothing. Doesn't even have anything to do with your, what you're looking at now with your physical eye, your circumstance that you're in now, what you can see now. Okay, sorry, I was getting a call. It has nothing to do with the circumstance. Those quite, and that's why you have to be willing to not let the ego take control. Because the ego is going to say, well, you saw what happened the first time. You saw what happened the second time. You still want to do this? Do you still want to write that book? Because that requires you to look beyond the ego, to look, to silence the ego, to look beyond logic, to look beyond what's practical. Okay. So now I want to go back to that fallacy of is it you know is it um um too late or is it 
or as it refers to age, you know, can I still, you know, do this? Is it meant to be as it refers to age? So sometimes the question will come up, well, should I try this again? Like I said before, and the question comes up because really what we're asking ourselves is, is it too late? Am I too old? Now, if we're honest, if we're honest, that question comes not because we're questioning whether we are too old or if we're questioning whether we feel that it's too late. Number one, we don't feel it's too late. Number two, we don't think that we're too old. Too old. If we're honest, those questions will come about because we think that's what other people are going to say to us or think about us. We're too worried about what other people, how we're going to be viewed by other people. We still know what we want. Our dreams are still valid to us. But the care and concern about what other people think overshadow that. All right? So again, it's not the question of do I still find joy in thinking about this vision? That's not the question. What it's about, what are other people going to say? What other people think that it's too late for me? What other people say, am I too old? I'm too old for this. So now back to the question, who or what decides or gets to decide what is meant for you in your life? You, you decide what is meant for you because you get to decide how you want to be in your life, what you want to do in your life and what you want to have in your life because all of that makes up your identity. All of that makes up your identity. So that was the really long way to answer that question. All right. And so again, I want to tell you, thank you for tuning in. Thank you to all of my new subscribers for coming through. Don't forget about uh, my one-on-one -on -one transformative sessions that I'm offering. They are 75 minute consultations. I don't like to use the word coach because really you are your own coach okay these sessions are to get you to return go back internally to who you are embrace your power to expand into the life that you want so that you can be do and have what you want you have the power for that we examine there we don't spend a whole bunch of time on them but we Uncover blocks, what could be blocking you, not with judgment. We're just observing, okay? And it's to remind you that you're not your emotions, you're not your feelings. This is not to get you to fix anything. Nothing about you needs to be fixed. It's just simply getting you to say, well, what is my true identity? My true identity... It, extends beyond any circumstance because I get to decide what is meant for me. So thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Tamra Tamu Collective where dreams have no filter. Cheers.